Hi all, our interesting historical game today is Anoff Anderson against Howard Staunton in the London tournament of 1851. This was the semi-final match, so this was a really important tournament at the time. Anoff Anderson kicked off with e4. <clears throat> we have a Sicilian defence. d4, as though it might be a, a Smith Mora. No, it's actually not f3 here. E6 keeping quite solid. Staunton keeps quite solid. E5 would have weakened his light squares a bit, like this diagonal. So keeping uh, that diagonal intact, knight takes. But quite an unusual move now. It's uh, bishop c5. This has actually been used by Michael Basman, British Iron Michael Basman, this kind of early bishop c5. It's interesting. Knight c3, a6. Bishop's given a retreat square back. Which actually in this position white is potentially now threatening knight takes e6. So the bishop goes back to where it's protected by the, the rook. Bishop d3. We have knight e7. Both sides castle. And now we have an instinctively good move, queen h5. Yeah, this is very, very dangerous already for black. In some respects. You know, e5 is threatened, just going for h7. Knight g6, but now e5 anyway, and with this, this looks like a very dangerous maneuver. Uh, it's a yeah, it looks looks like quite a dangerous position. Black is in here, and with the queen here and the bishop pointing at g6, it's difficult to play f6. Uh, black played queen c7, and in fact, technically, this position it seems yeah, black might be fastening this, or is he? This is the thing. White played here rook a e1, knowing that uh, queen takes e5 is a trap. Bishop takes g6, winning a piece because it protects the queen. It uh, that's winning a piece basically. But before going into the game continuation, it seems knight f3 is very very strong here with ideas of knight g5 and knight e4. Very very strong indeed. I'll give you some examples. Uh, I mean, it's close to winning actually. Technically, if h6, we can just snap that off, and we're we're going to play knight g5 next. That's no good. If uh, d5, we can just take knight g5, and if h6, knight takes f7. This is not particularly nice for black. Yeah, it's it's all it's all pretty pretty bad. Taking here it looks attractive in some way. It's double the pawns, but. Uh, it's too dynamically aggressive here, this position. Again, this, this trap holds that we can just take there on g6. So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the knight's protecting e5 anyway. Pardon me. <laughs> uh, so basically, no, this position, my my notes, going with my notes, h6. Uh, there's bishop takes g6 with queen takes g6. And now knight e4 to f6 to follow. Uh, yeah, it just seems after knight f3, this is just a really incredibly difficult position. It's it's actually like close to it's like winning. It's like winning this position just after the simple knight f3. So it does seem as this is suspect. There isn't enough defense around the king. The bishop's over there. G5 is not covered. H7 isn't really covered. If we just trace back earlier, here, uh, you know, knight g6 already here might actually be technically a mistake. Something like d6 and the point is if e5 g6 and that makes things difficult for white to crack through when it's only slightly better so it, it seems as though there was a missed opportunity here in playing rook a e1 although it sets a little trap queen e5 bishop g6 we have b5 f4 bishop b7 knight e4 and again, this looks really quite dangerous now. Knight g5, and if h6, there's knight f7. It snapped off. Knight c6. White takes on c6 and plays now g4. This is quite aggressive. Uh, but here, black missed a shot. They say pin and win. Black played this rook ad8. There's actually a pin and sort of at least draw here with taking. And then queen before rook h3 happens queen a7 this is really annoying for white if this did happen 
for example here here uh, King G2 Knight takes F4 is check winning the Queen as a disaster sequence to avoid but um, you know this this is tricky uh, if Queen H3 then Rook AD8 and yeah it's it's uh, it's about equal so just to show this again uh, Rook AD8 and say King H1 shows the resourcefulness of black in this position he's not waiting for rook h3 because can you see what black can play in this position tactically you know they say pin and win but yeah this is actually a pin and win example now black to play if i give you five seconds to pause the video although white's unpinned it's at some cost queen takes e3 check and knight takes f4 so it seems this was a major shot actually it's not trivial this pin not trivial by a long shot to play like this but uh, we see rook ad8 instead and after king h1 it's a very different story black struggling here he actually closes up that diagonal voluntarily yeah it's a very very different picture now on things rook f3 going in for h3 for the kill this is just weird stuff, Queen A5. But what else is Black doing? White is preparing his attack systematically with the bishop pair. It looks pretty miserable. The rook moves. Okay, I mean there was that threat. Okay, to address Queen A4, another one mover threat. But there's a point here, I guess, that uh, is coming up, which we see after Queen takes A2, Rook H3, H6. It looks as though Black's being torn apart but there's a surprise move by Staunton trying to generate some complications here can you see what black plays okay rook takes d3 trying to generate some checks at least and there's a pin in this position 97 it looks like a reasonable blockade square if only like this position and to block up the H file that might be sufficient compensation you might think so he aims for that g6 but there's a flaw here in that h7 check Queen g5 is threatening to mate uh, so the knight actually is pushed back here to g7 to defend that mate so knight f5 to g7 just to defend but white breaks through now with a breakthrough move can you see if I give you five seconds. F5. The pawn here makes it impossible for rook g8. So this is pin and win actually in action here. Just putting more pressure on that pin piece now with bishop h6. In this position, there's a spike check or two or three. And after these spike checks, now it's end of game. Howard Staunton resigns. It's a game not of great technical importance, you might think, but historically, this is one of the most important tournaments in Europe uh, for, to, to establish the strongest European player. Adolf Anderson ended up winning the tournament, but this was his major match. You know, Howard Staunton in the semi final. Very interesting games between them. It seems, at least in a couple, Howard Staunton could have, could have actually lost quite quite quicker actually with more accurate play from Adolf Anderson but nevertheless the attacking spirits there in both players and and the resourcefulness spirit is there in both players to some extent okay hope you enjoyed it comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much